heard the king laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You all believe a lie. You all believe a false narrative. I'm not saying that it's your fault. Because I believe that we were children. And that is that you are unique. You are somehow we are. First of all, physically, that is naturally, because this is a one camera picture show, as I say. You know, there's, there's only one angle. There's only one lens by which we interpret the world, and it's ours. So we're already idolaters. We, al we already believe whatever we see and process to be true. That's why that was such a popular movie, was because it was beyond anything that we could understand. Isn't it what we perceive reality? We've been fed, so, so we had that intrinsically. And then we've been fed this American uh, pull yourself up by your bootstraps understanding that goes along with us and feeds us. If you try hard, you will be rewarded. We believe that if you work hard, you will gain for yourself prosperity. Or at least, what do they say? Your slice of American pie. And that's all fine and good when it comes to our understanding of America. When it comes to our understanding of capitalism. When it comes to our understanding uh, that we have to live in this world to, uh, to feed our families. You know, the church is not immune to this. We have bills that we have to pay. We can't say, you know what? We're not individuals. We're not going to pay you. Because the electric company can always say, guess what? We're not going to give you light, heat, or air. So, I mean, we, we, we're not immune to this. But it further cements my point that you believe a false narrative. You believe a lie. That we are all individuals. And I don't say this because when it first hits your ear, it should probably be offensive. And if it is offensive, then I'm right. If it's offensive, then it means that I'm saying things that are true. Because if your first word then you've just proven my point. The church doesn't understand that. And that's why I read the text that I just read for St. James. Because listen to this. About that time, Herod the king laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. Now, those who belonged to the church. Does that, does that sound like individualism? That sounds like property, doesn't it? That sounds like your own. It sounds like you're bought at some sort of price, right? Isn't that what slavery is? That's also why we don't believe in free will. 
Free will does nothing but damn us and get us in all sorts of trouble. Individualism. The, the good old American way works in America. It doesn't work in France. It doesn't work in the Middle East. And it doesn't work in the church. Christ is not polyamorous. Christ does not have more than one bride. He has one bride, the church, and you are her. You are not individuals when it comes to the church. You are the bride of Christ. So it's a good thing that we don't stand on our own two feet. It's a good thing that we don't say, give me what I deserve. Give me what I have sown. Because if we don't trust the sower, or worse, we put ourselves in the place of the sower, then the seed that we reap will be sin, death, and the devil. So we don't believe in free will because we are always slaves. We are either slaves to sin or slaves to Christ's righteousness. That's it. There is no freedom. But I would rather be a slave to Christ and serve Him than free in a world that hates Him. And so when we look at the world with American eyes, and we look at the world with individual eyes, we see people who are willing to step on each other's throats to climb up the ranks. The church doesn't have that. Not the true church. I mean, don't get me wrong, we have bureaucrats and all of that in the formation of the church. But the true church, that which sins are, for, are, 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 are confessed and repented of, in that, there is we, the community of forgiven sinners. With all that being said, today we celebrate an individual, St. <laughs> James. But the reason we celebrate St. James is because of what he did in the body of Christ. If you look at the front, you'll see two things. The front of your bulletin, you'll see two things. A baptismal font and a sword. Anytime you see a sword when it comes to the apostles, it's not a good sign. And so if we were to bury St. James today, what would be his epitaph? pomp and circumstance, what would be his legacy? I read it. He killed James, the brother, with a sword. That's it. All the things that St. James did, walking with Christ, teaching, writing the epistle, of all the things he did for all of his labors, what does he get? He gets killed with a sword, and that's all it says. And then it goes back and points to Christ. Well, then, if St. James, the brother of John, who was killed with a sword, who belonged to the church, not as an individual, but as one who is part of the church, if he is killed with the sword, the same one who asked Jesus for glory to sit at his right hand and his brother at his left, or one or the other, if he is one who is killed with the sword in this earth, what can we expect for ourselves, our individual selves? The truth is, is that we have swords. 
And those swords are a coming. The sword may be cancer, COVID, speeding, not speeding. And there's such a myriad of ways in which the sword can be laid to our throats that I can't, I'm not even going to pretend to begin to list them. But we all have a sword of you. We all want good for ourselves. We're all trained to believe the lie that we are individuals. Fine, he stands alone. I will, I will give you that. The unbeliever stands alone. He will be judged individually. But if you are a baptized Christian, you do not stand alone. With Christ, and when you stand with Christ, Christ brings his bride, the rest of us. Dead or alive, you're coming with Jesus. And so when James and John comes up for this and asks for these individual blessings, Jesus asks him the question, or, or, or says to him, and we assume that what Jesus is going to answer, he, uh, he actually doesn't. Are, do you, uh, uh, you do not know what you are asking, Jesus says, period. You do not know what you are asking. We assume he's about as though or to be to the baptism for baptized and they say to him and you would think that at this point they would kind of shrink down and go no 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 forget it i didn't say anything we will uh we'll we'll be back here but they don't they say yes we are able A, B, C, and D. But Jesus doesn't say that. In fact, the reason that Christ can't give his right and left hand to James and John is exactly because of the answer he gives to them. You're right. The cup you drink, the cup that I drink, you will drink. The baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But the left is not mine to grant for whom it is prepared. You see, the right hand of God the Father, Christ sits. But to Christ's right hand is His incarnational brother and sister. Christ made flesh. Do you want the right hand of my hand? You must sit at the cross. You must sit at the cross. Let us sit at your right hand and your left hand in glory. There's the glory. Who wants to sit at his right and his left now? Who wants to be individuals now? Where were the disciples when he did this? Where was James? Locked in a room for fear of the Jews. And for good reason, as they would kill him with a sword later. So when Christ answers, yes, you and you the tense. He said you will. You will drink the cup or the, the baptism for which I am baptized, you will be baptized. After I die, after I am sacrificed, after my life is lifted back up, you will be able to drink the cup from which I drink. You will be baptized with the baptism for which I am baptized. You want to know why? Because I'm the one who's going to do it. You will drink it because it's going to come from my side. You will be washed in it because it's going to come from my side. My right hand and then my left hand is not mine to give. 
What I give is with my right hand and with my left hand, I give you the forgiveness. food, water, heavenly water to be washed in. There is my right hand and my left hand. Do you want everlasting glory in heaven? Then be washed. Eat and drink my body and blood. And so when the ten became indignant at the other two because they wanted one up on them, let's be honest, and the other ten were like, hey, wait, we want. And Jesus calls him and says, no, you don't understand. This is what it means to be glory, to be glorified. You must serve. Because just like the Son of Man who came not to be served but to serve and to give His life as a ransom for many. You see, there's only one true individual and it was Jesus on the cross. Nobody else could be there except Christ. Nobody else could atone for the sin of the world except the fully God and that is Christ Jesus. And there, God the Father poured out His cup of wrath upon His son so that He wouldn't be poured. With that, He dies. Picks His life up and says, with this authority, all Authority in heaven and earth has been given unto me. Therefore, go. go. The Son of the, of the Holy Spirit and teach all that I have taught you. And I will be with you even to the end of the age. And that you, there is in Greek a y'all. It is in Greek. And it means I'm talking to you individually all together. If that makes sense. It took me a long time to understand that. Individually, all together. And it comes out of the Hebrew for. I will be with you. He's saying, I will be with y'all. But to every one that they would baptize, and every one that I baptize, every one that baptize with the words in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen.